Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Hillary Clinton's all shook up tonight, and I'll watch it. I'll tweet live during it. I'm going to live tweet the Democratic presidential debate. My tweet list is going up by the thousands every day because I'm doing them all day long now. And, uh, I mean, what are we going to tweet tonight? Questions we'd really like to ask of Hillary Clinton? Questions we'd really like to ask of Bernie the Socialist Sanders? You know, you know what kind of softball questions you're going to hear. Uh, Anderson Cooper, Hillary, you're facing withering attacks about your email server and the missing internet, uh, the missing emails. Do you personally find internet pop-up ads annoying? That would be an Anderson Cooper question. Here's another Anderson Cooper, a hardball. Real hardball. You know how tough he is. You know how tough Anderson Cooper is. Hillary Clinton, Mrs. Clinton, President Obama's deal with Iran has met with great criticism. Do you think Persian rug sales will now increase in the United States? That would be Anderson Cooper's level. Here's another one. Mrs. Clinton, ISIS power is growing as a direct result of the Arab Spring and they're becoming more and more brutal. What is it that amazes you most about camels? Mrs. Clinton. Putin is flexing his might in Syria and becoming a leader in the region. What was your favorite part in the movie Dr. Zhivago? <laughs> God. No, this is what you can expect tonight from Anderson Cooper. Here's another one. <clears throat> Mrs. Clinton, China is becoming an economic uh, and cybersecurity threat to our nation. What is the best fortune you ever got from a fortune cookie? <laughs> Here's another one. Mrs. Clinton, they can't ask O'Malley. Here's the only question they ask O'Malley. Excuse me, Mr. O'Malley, who are you? Nobody knows who you are. Who are you? So he's a stooge. He's a, he's, a, he's a fake one. And I told you Bernie Sanders wouldn't have lasted a day if he wasn't the creation of the Clinton machine to make her look centrist. He's a crackpot, a left-wing fanatic, a soapbox derby guy, a man who belongs in the, the NYU of 1930s screaming against the United States of America. He belongs as a union organizer for the ILGWU. No, I tell you, when the, when the working man takes over America, that's who he is. So what can you ask Bernie Sanders? Nothing. So all these fake questions are going to be thrown at her. Mrs. Clinton, religious liberty is coming under fire in America. Isn't it time that Hollywood made a flying nun movie? And do you think Sally Field would be too old to play her, Mrs. Clinton? Mrs. Clinton, many Americans believe there is a war on Christians in this country. Um, do you believe in Santa Claus? <laughs> Mrs. Clinton, the Supreme Court made a very controversial ruling on gay marriage this year. When buying gifts, do you use the registry or just pick something that you like? Mrs. Clinton, cops are being attacked all over America. The question is, do you prefer, do you prefer Batman or Superman when you go to the movies? Mrs. Clinton, race relations in this country are worse than they have been in 50 years. What is your favorite track and field event? These are the questions that you're going to expect tonight. Do you understand what I'm doing here? Mrs. Clinton, most Americans oppose illegal immigration. They want all immigration stopped from Mexico, Guatemala, Honduras. Mrs. Clinton, where in this nation can you find the best enchiladas, in your opinion? Mrs. Clinton, we've just had another mass shooting in Oregon, prompting calls for more gun control. We know that you visited Oregon. Where is the best coffee shop in Portland to be found? Mrs. Clinton, the homeless population is on the rise in big cities around the country. Can you tell us that, uh, can you tell us your favorite city to vacation in? That's the kind of softball questions you're going to get. You know that. They're not going to be real. And I don't know how big the event is going to be, uh, ratings-wise. We looked up what else will be on TV tonight. MTV has the hip-hop awards. My guess is they'll outdraw this debate two to three to one. In fact, Robert, tweet that for me right now. Savage says hip-hop awards will outdraw the Democrat debate tonight. Okay, get, get on my Twitter list because this is going to be firing way all day. Showtime has Inside the F uh, NFL. HBO has a movie. Fox has The Grind, their Scream Queens. CBS has NCIS. ABC has Fresh Off the Boat. 
And NBC is going to be running Best Time Ever with Neil Patrick Harris, The Voice. I think it's going to be very poorly attended because it's a... When you have a stooge debate like this, <clears throat> where they're not going to go after Hillary for all of the crimes she's allegedly involved in, why would anyone watch? And speaking of that, i got to tell you something quickly. I have great hope for America surviving, and I'll tell you why. I went to a Chinese restaurant last night, and I was leafing through the menu. It's one of my favorite uh, Chinese dumps in San Francisco. It's a Hunan place. I went in very late at night, and I looked on the menu, and there's an entire page of, of pork items. Now, as you well know, Barack Obama being ever politically correct, meaning bending over backwards for Islam, banned the use of pork products in prisons in order to cater to the radical Muslims who were taking over the prisons. He said it's not for that reason. Of course, it is for the reason. But I realized in looking at the menu under the entrees, hot and spicy country-style dishes, most dishes can be made mild, ask your waiter. There's harvest pork, there's shredded pork and celery, there's shredded pork with vegetables and hot bean sauce, there's Hunan spare ribs, there's uh, Kung Pao pork, there's Polish sausage, Robert would like that. There are other pork dishes, and I realize that the Chinese love two things that the Muslims hate, pork and alcohol. So the only hope, or the greatest hope for America right now is not, is not Russia, it's actually China. Because I tell you right now, the Chinese are not giving up pork and beer. That's all I can tell you. They are not going to give up pork and beer. No one's putting Sharia law into China. That's all. There's hope for America. Savage Nation, 855-407-282. Let's begin with the uh, absolute, you know, Anderson Cooper's a nice guy. You could see that. He is a nice guy. He's the kind of guy you'd want to have as an uncle for your children if your uncle wasn't married. He would be a nice uncle. He's the kind of guy who says, I have a niece. If you say you're married, he's have a niece. But that's okay. Nothing wrong with that. But he's a dummy. He's just a good-looking dumbbell. I want you to listen to a montage of Anderson Cooper asking really serious questions through his career created for you, especially for the Savage Nation. Uh, Evander Holyfield, the uh, former uh, uh, former uh, heavyweight boxing champ. Uh, as someone who's been bitten during a sporting event, what do you think when you saw that? Did you even realize what was happening? I mean, I can't imagine the shock of being bitten. When it happened to you, did you even realize what was happening? Tyson not only bit both of your ears, he also took parts of both of them off. I, I mean, ha, ha, has it been repaired? You're comparing yourself I, to the signers of Declaration of Independence. Aren't you playing into the narrative of ISIS, bringing guns to a mosque while people, while families are praying inside, wearing t-shirts that say F Islam? You don't think that's promoting <laughs> violence at all? No, I'm asking you now, do you accept that President Obama was born in the United States, bad things happening. I mean, is that really straight talk? All right, that's a little bit of who, who's going to be the moderator. As you know, he's unqualified at any speed. The man is only on television because he looks good, and he's an empty suit. Everyone knows that. Now, here's another montage of the great moderator, Anderson Blooper, and his stupidest moments in clip number two. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> giggling? That made me giggle, giggle every job. time I read it. He hasn't commented on this incident. The giggler. The giggler. There are some Gigabyte. things I just won't do on TV. I won't dance, I won't sing, and... Oh! Oh, a giggler? Sorry, this is actually never happened to me. Oh, my God, he's gone merry on us. I have had a little bit more experience in other areas other than with guys. And I like this. <laughs> Oh my, and where did this come from? I must from? say, immensely kind of satisfying it's about, uh, <laughs> so, you know. It's a calming experience. It is a calming experience. It's like petting a dog or something. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. Well, there it is. He's a gigabyte of giggles, this guy. <laughs> <laughs> he's a gigabyte of giggles. So what are you going to do tonight? You're going to get excited because he's not going to ask Hillary Clinton any real questions? You're going to get mad and say, look, they attacked Trump the minute he came out of the gate. Uh, Martha Washington came out screeching, attacking him, ripped his eye, tried to rip his eyes out, and all she did was break her fingernails. You know who Martha Washington is. You know who Martha Washington is, the Matahari of, uh, of Fox News. But the fact is, is that she was vicious to Donald Trump, and it backfired on her. It backfired on her. She's lost all credibility with people who know who she is and who she works for. 
And I have nothing against them. I'm in the media. It's a tough business. Everyone's got to do what they got to do. We know that she works for Roger Ailes. We know that Murdoch pulls the strings. We know that he is the team owner. That team owner tells them exactly where they're supposed to go, how far they're supposed to go. And it doesn't matter whether you believe it or not. That's the way it is. They're in favor of massive immigration into America. They never say anything against radical Islam. That's it. That's the story. No point in arguing with me. I know the inside story. That's why you listen to me. That's the opening to my show. I'm not going to take a break. I need some music right now. I need a little music, so let's have Shortest Straw by my favorite group. And you know the favorite group is, they are really my favorite group, as I grope for a little start of the music and just ad-libbing along here to get you to listen as we search for it. President Obama is the shortest straw imaginable. If you were to construct a person who could denigrate America so rapidly, it couldn't be, it couldn't be done. If you were to invent somebody as a cartoon, if you were to create somebody in a laboratory who could take America down so fast, it couldn't have been done as quickly as under Barack Obama. Now, I have nothing against the man. I'm sure he's a perfect cyborg. And whoever created him, whichever CIA laboratory he was created in, they did a fabulous job. They knew exactly how to shade him. They knew exactly how to get the booming voice. As I said, Teddy Roosevelt said, talk softly and carry a big stick. And Barack Obama has reversed that. He talks loudly and carries a broken stick. He's so deranged that he says Putin is the weak one, he's the strong one. Meanwhile, in the Middle East, they love Putin so much, they're creating Putin T-shirts across the Arab land, both Sunni and Shia. Go figure, I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. So, you know, Columbus Day was yesterday, and of course, the anti-American president couldn't miss the opportunity to attack Columbus and Columbus Day. So, he said this. And I, this, is not a, this is not a satire. Only this low life in the White House could say a thing like this. In his proclamation for Columbus Day, President Zero acknowledged that Columbus, quote, inspired many and allowed for generations of Italians to follow. But then he continued, and he gave this knife in the guts of Columbus Day and Italian-Americans. President Zero continued, and he said, Though these early travels expanded the realm of European exploration, to many they also marked a time that forever changed the world for the indigenous peoples of North America. Previously unseen disease, devastation, and violence were introduced to their lives. And as we pay tribute to the ways in which Columbus pursued ambitious goals, we also recognize the suffering inflicted upon Native Americans, and we recommit to strengthening tribal sovereignty and maintaining our strong ties. Now, this is something a junior college teacher somewhere in an unknown junior college would write in an American history class, and it's what we've come to expect from President Zero. Never miss an opportunity to be smirched an American institution, an American holiday, or an American tradition, especially when you hate America, its traditions, and its history. And that's what you put into the White House. Don't blame me. Now, what would you really like to ask Hillary tonight? I mean, you're going to watch it. Everyone knows you're going to watch it if you're political. There's not a political person in this country who, if they're not, if they're near a TV set or have a phone they can turn on, who's not going to watch it for five, six, ten minutes. You know it's going to be nothing with Anderson Cooper because he's an empty, uh, he's an empty pair of uh, ballet tights. It's that simple. He's an empty pair of tights, this guy. You know, Ronan Farrow was a step up from uh, Anderson Cooper. And that, that's who they have left now. You know, you're going to do it on CNN, at least get one of them who has some, to use a, an antiquated word, gravitas. Who else would you have picked to be a moderator? Certainly not Anderson Cooper. He appeals to a certain demographic. Even Wolf Blitzer, as much as I detest him, would have been a better mo a moderator because at least he's serious. He's a serious nobody. This one is an unserious nobody. He'll ask nothing. But you know Hillary's going to get away with the virtual murders that uh, she's associated with in. Notice I didn't say with, because if I said with, I would have been... So therefore I said within. See, I saved it in the nick of time. I've said a hundred times in radio, this is the toughest business in the world if you're playing it the right way, which is sort of like hockey on ice. And I, from the first day in radio, told my program director, he said, you know, you're a little hot on the radio, you've got to be careful. I said, I'm the type of hockey player that likes to smash the puck against the plexiglass and really excite the fans. 
but you don't want that puck going through the glass, and you don't want the puck going over the glass, okay? That's the trick in radio. So, I mean, tonight, what are you going to do? You know, watch this. How much can you take of setup questions by a nobody?